G'day guys, Dan from The Guru. So, um, well we have our mate Jimbo here from Real Screen Fishing with his camera. Amazing camera, it's like full on, you should see this thing on the gimbal, it's doing this weird stuff, it's great. We thought we'd take advantage and show you guys a couple of how-to videos. Um, and this one in particular, I just want to show you guys how to um, essentially correctly crimp. Um, I've seen a lot of videos online uh, as part of our research and development stage where people are crimping these rigs up and they don't seem to be crimping them correctly and and that's fine and and it, it would potentially work for them I've, I've got no issues and I, I don't mean to have a go of these guys the only downside of not correctly crimping or not correctly crimping I apologize is that you know it's not necessarily going to be as strong a connection as what you may need um, if you're really going to load it up with that that target species so um, all it all it comes down to essentially is, is don't mind this. Welcome to Guru HQ. This is the most unorganized, organized mess in the world. Um, you'll notice here where we have all our separate components. This is how we make all your rigs up, guys. So thank you for your support there as well. Um, but essentially, I've got I've got two different types of uh, of steel trace here. Um, I've got two different types of crimps and I've got two different types of hooks and today the plan is just to show you how to utilize these two crimps and correctly uh, do them when when making your own shark rigs for example so we'll start with this one here so here I have a hundred pound or two hundred pound sorry uh, nylon coated wire trace we have a 15-0 circle shark rig stainless steel and then we've got one of these little alloy crimps now these ones I'm pretty sure are about 2.2 mil see those okay Jimbo so these ones are approximately 2.2 mil they're the correct crimp for the trace so it's really important that we when uh, finding or when crimping a rig as opposed to tying one up that we try and match the crimp with the trace as best as you can um, just because it's going to make sure that you haven't got a lot of uh, room in the crimp that, that necessarily could be a weak point in your in your rig so first of all what we do is we take the trace and we put the crimp on there, right? So that's pretty straightforward. Now, that's that's pretty pretty simple and straightforward. Now, one thing that we like to do is we actually like to protect the trace from the from the hook from potentially rubbing away at it. So we just have a little bit of rubber, sort of a rubber uh, piece that we've cut here off of off of a really big roll that we get made up into state, and then we'll put the hook onto that one. All right, so pretty straightforward so far. Okay, what we do then is then we then bring the trace back around upon itself and feed it back through the crimp. So I'll show you, I know that Jimbo is trying to get a nice close up for us, but I'll show you that it's pretty straightforward. So all we've done is we've just brought it back through, so now they're both sitting in the crimp. Now, before we go and crimp that, I just want to show you guys, make sure that if you're going to go down this path, you get a decent set of crimping pliers. Now we've been through a lot, um, We've made thousands and thousands and thousands of rigs over the years and we've been through a lot of these and the best ones we've found so far, not necessarily the brand, but they're the stainless steel versions as opposed to the die cast ones. The die cast ones just snap consistently. One thing you'll notice on these types of crimping pliers, however, is they have, I'll just grab a pen, they have various sizes available. So these sizes are there to help you figure out which of your, um, which of these crimping cavities is going to be best suit your crimp now because i said that ours is about 2.3 mil we're looking for the third one down which is one mil to two mil size so one thing with these and, and the reason for this video jimbo i'll just get you to zoom in is we find that a lot of people don't seem to know how to crimp these and a lot of people will just go ahead and just crimp it like that and the problem with that is that it weakens the knot so what you want to do is you want to essentially get these ends here to flare out so you want to be going down across the crimp as opposed to against the crimp if that makes any sense at all and you'll see what I mean in a minute once I crimp this these the indent will be in the middle of the crimp and the ends will actually flare out all right and that's the way that you want your crimp to look if it looks any other way from that and I can probably try and show you in a minute uh, what it could look like otherwise then it, it's not necessarily as strong as what it could be so we'll just quickly Thanks. while we've got the camera there you notice that we're going down on the crimp as opposed to across it. Okay, on, so see if I can just... focus in on that. I might come around the other side if that's right. You got it. Don't mind the mess yep. behind it, guys. And then you just give it a good little crimp. 
and then you'll notice, like I said, that we're crimped in the middle. However, those ends have kind of flared out. All right, so hopefully you guys can see what I was harping on about. Now, what I might do on the other end of this is I might show you an example of what we've seen and, and what scares us necessarily if that person's relying on that rig to catch that big fish, right? So let's just do a, just do a bit of a double loop here. It makes it look a bit prettier for the video. Um, so what we don't like to see is I'll go across the crimp. Okay, so I'll go, as opposed to going down on the crimp, I'll go across the crimp. It's actually difficult to do. I'm not sure why this is the preferred method, but... So you can see there how all it does, all that does is that basically just flares, flares the, the this out, and that just weakens that. So the, the downside of this is because the aluminium and because the crimp is so thin in this particular section that could actually break through there it could actually snap on the load and then you could potentially lose that fish of a lifetime so which you wouldn't be overly excited about okay so we'll just show you uh, on a different style so on a different type of crimp here we have a one of those double brass ones just to give you guys a little bit of a um an alternative just so that you can see how to do it for both of them so this is one of those double brass style crimps and i've got just a it's still a coated wire but this is a 300 pound um i don't like that end it's a bit frayed so we'll still feed it through the crimp as per usual all right we'll still put the uh oh, providing the frayed end will let us do it we'll still put a bit of rubber on there just to protect the the wire from the hook rubbing yeah looks like we're good and this time we're going to chuck a big 11-0 shark hook on there. So Again, we feed it back through the double crimp. And it's exactly the same theory behind this one, guys. So instead of going across the crimp, we want to go down on it. Okay, And this one's big enough that we'll actually be able to do two of them. So what we'll do is we'll do the first one. It's the same crimping section. So we'll do the first one on this one. And you'll notice that she's flared out again, as mentioned before, it's sort of flared out on the end. So that means that it's actually not cutting into your wire and going with the natural flow of that wire as it goes into the crimp. And then we'll do a second one. And again, the bottom's flared out as, as well. So. As you can see guys, even with the two crimps, it still flares out and instead of cutting into the wire itself, it actually goes with the natural throw and the natural flow and then that sort of helps you make sure that that breaking strain is as high as it possibly can be. So hopefully that helps some of you guys out. Um, feel free to purchase our shark rigs, at least you know that they're going to be crimped correctly. Otherwise, if you want to make your own, hopefully that's, um, that's helped you do that. So thanks again for watching guys and we'll catch you next time.